Hey, it's theCUBE. We are at MWC 23 in Barcelona, Spain. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Dave, we've had some great conversations at the event so far. The name change from Mobile World Congress to MWC Reflex, it's not just about mobile. There are so many other interesting components. There's a lot going on in telecom. We've only just started to crack the surface. I mean, mobile was a huge catalyst for this show, obviously, changed the world. Uh, but there's so much more going on at the show, but let's talk about mobile. Let's talk about <laughs> mobile. We've got two guests here with us. Dr. Srinivas Mukamala is back, the Chief Product Officer at Avanti. Great to have you back. Sally Fuller also joins us, the Director of BT and EE Enterprise Mobile Products Group at BT. Welcome to the program. Great to be here. So I want to get both of your perspectives on how mobility is evolving. Sally, we'll start with you and then Shri will go to you. Absolutely. Yeah, sure, so I think, um, it's an amazing time in mobile and it feels like we're at the beginning of our next big inflection point. So our customers are, are really going, you know, they were going mobile first, but now they're going mobile only. And they're layering into their mobile estate everything it takes to do their job. So they're really supporting their field workers, their remote workers. So well, actually, what's your task? How do we help you do your task using the mobile services? Meanwhile, what we're trying to do is make sure that the really, really big and important ones are embedded in our network, and the rest of them are securely enabled into that mobile endpoint, so that we can help our customers have a really effortless experience and really do what they need to do, which is empower their people to do their jobs. So it's quite an exciting time. It's happening in the backdrop of quite a lot of ambiguity and sort of uncertainty in the market. There's a lot of... Um, you know, customers are sort of hanging on to their coattails a little bit with changes that are happening around them. So we've got to help them through that uncertainty. The markets are volatile, their customer environments are volatile, you know, the labor markets are changing. So we've got to help them work through all of that change that's going on around them as well. Sri, what are you seeing, obviously, from Avanti's perspective? There's a lot of opportunity there with what Sally was describing. So first, the definition of mobility is expanded exponentially, right? I mean, when people look at mobility, they think it's just your phones. One thing we forget is wearables, implants, your digital robots, your autonomous cars, right? Everything from your sensing devices to what you have implants today is all mobility, right? It's the exponential growth of that. From our perspective, we probably will be one of the best beneficiaries of this expansion. Think about us, we're one of the leading mobile device management vendors in the world. I mean, unbeatable vendor there. At the same time, we also bring in amazing mobile threat defense as well. So from our perspective, while everybody's talking about mobile here, that's what we're talking about. I'm scared at one hand, I see the opportunity on the other hand to really bring a mission to the world of securing this frontline workers. Today we look at it as a horizontal. Everything is mobile, everything needs to be managed. Everything needs to be secure, but when you start verticalizing mobile on, okay, what is an emergency device? What is life-threatening? What is reliability? What is just regular sensing? You're going to start seeing a different evolution of scrutiny and assurance mobile needs to provide that your endpoint end, end computing had never had to do that. Today, if your computer goes down, it's a bad thing, but if your implant goes down, you're going to lose a human life. It's, you're going to start looking at a very different perspective of what mobility brings to the people thing. Autonomous vehicles is one thing that scares the out of it. While we are very comfortable with aviation, we're not comfortable with cars just going by themselves on the streets yet. Yes, we allow them to do it, but we still have a lot of regulations, right? So those are some of the evolutions. I look at it and say, what can we do as an industry to do better? I mean, you're right, it's not just a smartphone. You know, it used to be that the, the PC drove the economics of everything technology. And then, you remember the iPod? You know, you had a spinning disk in there. But, yep. it, but then the, the flash, you know, came, and then the ARM processors, and the economics have completely changed. So, there are some big picture trends that are going on in the industry. From BT's perspective, when you zoom out, what are the things that sort of inform you, Sally, in terms of your strategy that you're going to be leaning into over the next decade? Um, so BD's a huge operator. We've got the biggest mobile network in the UK. We've got a network, we support networks in 180 countries. We've got a major security business, both for, for securing our own network, as well as obviously for supporting our customer security. 
So we draw on all of that to design our products and our services for our customers. And, and their attack surface is changing. You know, it's changing because of how they work. It's changing because they're using cloud more and more. It's changing because criminals are really creative now about how to catch someone when they're off guard. You know, whether or not it's atta attacking a human being who's not completely in the moment and clicks on the wrong thing or hasn't kept their mobile estate fully up to date and downloaded the latest software, or whether it's because something hasn't been properly, has, hasn't been designed securely. So we need to help our customers think through where are their risks and how do we help them effortlessly protect as much of that estate as possible so that really creative cyber criminals can be kept away from what's precious to our customers and what's precious to their suppliers and their customers. And that takes a lot of thought and knowledge and amazing partnerships to do that really well. Can you talk about how that, the partnership with Avanti is enabling that? Because you mentioned the, the threat landscape is changing, it's so amorphous yeah. these days and there's only going to be the explosion of mobility and mobile devices. Talk about the partnership from BT's perspective and what yeah. it's really enabling you to deliver to your end customers. So we've been partners for 10 years, really trusted partnership, fabulous partnership. So we work hand in hand with our customers, hand in hand with our sales teams, our technical teams. And that means a lot, because it means we show up together to our customers and we're both experts and we can give them the best advice. We can help educate if that's what they need. We can partner and design. It's a team sport. Um, and we play that team sport really proudly and really well. I'm really pleased that in March we'll be launching a new secure UEM offer with Avanti. We're including it free of charge for our SME customers, which means they don't have to think about it. It's just added in by the mobile tariff. You get packaged in secure UEM from Avanti. Don't have to think about it. And then it means they can properly manage their endpoints. They can start to think, well, where is someone? How are they being kept secure? You know, how do I protect them if they've lost their phone or they've left my business or they've joined my business? So we can do all of that for them with this offer. And it makes it easy and effortless for the customer to keep their business secure. And we're really proud of that. We're really proud to do that together. To me, that's really key because, you know, the, the, the operative phrase was you don't have to think about it. Because if, if somebody said to me, what's the biggest security challenge out there? I would say it's bad user behavior, <laughs> you know? So, and there was a period of time where you really, not much you could do about that, but, but you're referencing what you actually can do about that with automation and the like, but I, I'm sure there are other challenges. But, Education but, is everything though. Yeah. And I, and, but I think you've got to reward good behavior, not punish bad behavior. <laughs> so you've got to try and educate and encourage good practice. And I think that investment in training and awareness is really important. It's really where it starts, isn't it? So. Lena Smart is the, uh, she's the C, uh, CISO of MongoDB. And she does this thing where at Mongo, she takes her most sophisticated security pros and puts them together with just everyday people who know nothing about security. And they, they can see how much they don't know and vice versa, and then that's how they create this culture because yeah. it's going beyond the boardroom now. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Into the, to everywhere, but your thoughts on big no, challenges. I mean, uh, like Sally just talked about, right? It's the last mile is always the issue. Your user is the weakest, we talked about it. And now we're talking about generative AI, the next weakest link, because we want to feed everything to that. What will that do to us? So you're starting to see the attack vector go, and really what we need to do is we need to educate the humans. And we want every user within our organization to take security seriously. And not only, it's not that they don't take seriously, they don't have the awareness, and mm -hmm. it's on us to educate them and bring awareness. That, that's what it is. I mean, when we give a weapon, we tell them, hey, this is a weapon, it's going to harm people. With data, you can harm people if you don't pay attention to it. You can create unnecessary consequences and we need to bring that assurance all the way back. Yeah. Data is something you got to be careful with and there'll be consequences if you don't use it the right way. You, know, you brought up a generative AI. I mean, the state, of, the, the state of the art email today is warning this person's outside your organization, be careful. So I, I, I presume <laughs> we can do better as an industry, right? AI yes. is going to going to change that, is it not? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because today we have come long ways. We used to be uh, falling for Nigerian scams, right? That used to be a running joke. I mean, people used to give up their credentials for a Nigerian scam. You still see that, unfortunately. That's yeah. an, but today's phishing is a lot more targeted, right? You see spear phishing, things coming from very specific to you, they have context about 
what's going on today, and they're very crafted well. And with generative AI, you can see which one really sticks, and you can change up every few seconds, not even minutes. And our detection systems have to be that fast as well. I'm afraid today we're not there because we train, we don't train our models that fast enough. You know, in the, in the US I heard a stat recently that 50% of the companies don't have a, a SOC, Security Operations Center. And of course, small businesses, yeah. no way they have no a SOC. So I know you have some experience in small business, small, mid-sized business. What's the, what's, what's the value proposition there that you can share? Yeah, so I think um, it's really important that to recognize that exactly right, they don't have a dedicated team that focus on doing this. So that they're dedicated to serving their customers, to managing their cash flow, to, and they need us to take that load for them because they're so busy. And they're also 24 hours a day. You know, most SMEs are, they make their share of being super customer centric and being fast and being 24 by seven. But that's also a security risk because it means they can be caught off guard. You know, they can be in, a, in an informal zone, suddenly think, oh, that customer's just emailed me, let's click on that and respond. Or, you know, and before they know it, they're on a slippery slope where it could be phishing, it could be smishing, it could be ransomware. And we see customers spending weeks recovering from that. You know, really, really mm -hmm. damaging. And then, and for SME, that's cash stopped. You know, that's customer service stopped. So again, I, I think it's by packaging in this without them having to think about it, they can take extra consultancy and advice from us if they need it. And we can work with them to help look at their, their attack surface and say, well look, where could your biggest risks be? What do you most need to worry about? You can't worry about everything, but what do we most need to protect and help you on so that you're not part of something that is, is going to damage your business irreparably? So a lot of solutions and a lot of enablement are available from BT and Avanti for SMEs. Where can they go? Is there a URL or a site or an event that they can go to to learn more about how you're going to enable them to tackle those security challenges head on? I mean, I can take that question. I mean, the first most important thing is security is becoming a data problem. Dave asked a very good question, what about SOC? I mean, the perception of the SOC is, let me detect it when it's happening or let me go respond after it happened, right? However, we need to move towards the left. We keep talking about shift left from an AppSec perspective, but we should shift left from our thinking as well. Can I have proactive? What this really means is, do I understand my tax surface? So that's where our partnership really helps, because when you look at BT, they're not only a secure connectivity, but a secure compute as well. They're enabling the compute. So they understand what your endpoints are, they understand what you're doing with your, they're context aware. So once you have that knowledge with our software, we can truly tell you what your attack surface is. What are you exposed to the internet? What are you exposed internally? That's half the problem. Once that discovery is done, then we can prioritize, okay, if these are the things, this is how attackers are going to attack you. Right. Or this is what your weak point is. Prioritize those, start remediating them, and do that on a continuous basis. That's where the partnership really comes in. I mean, we call it the simplest way. We are dealing with inflation. Top of mind is do more with less. Small and medium enterprises don't have talent. They can't handle large volumes of data, nor they have the expertise. If they have, they can't retain them. So what we bring to the table? We bring the solutions that you can deploy, you can diffuse across, and with the best deflation. Because you don't have to have five people doing it, we bring that as a service and do it on a continual basis. The three Ds. How do we do it? With data, the domain expertise, and the data models. Three Ds, drop the mic, Sri, that was outstanding. Thank you both so much for spending time with Thank Dave you. and me today, really describing the evolution of mobility, the opportunities, what BT and Avanti are doing together, especially to enable those SMEs to have things much more simply on the security side. We really appreciate your insights. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thanks. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.